The Lord is building Jerusalem. The Lord is building Jerusalem. Gathering together the outcasts of Israel, healing broken hearts, binding up their wounds. The Lord is building, the Lord is building up Jerusalem. Miss Yolinda and Kathy, the Lord is building Jerusalem, the Lord is building Jerusalem, gathering together the outcasts of Israel, healing broken hearts, binding up their wounds. The Lord is building, the Lord is building up Jerusalem. Kiprop. Nahashan, Kram Yoman, nice to see you, brother, and Miss Sharon and Mel. Oh, hallelujah. These are all sons and daughters who are lovers of his word. Miss Connie has arrived. She's a lover. She's a sister and a child of the Most High King, coming to drink in the holy water of his word. Woo, glory. Maybe one more time, because we're going to read these words in Psalm 147 this morning. The Lord is building Jerusalem. The Lord is building Jerusalem. Gathering together the outcasts of Israel. Healing broken hearts. Healing broken hearts, Miss Kay. Healing broken hearts. Healing broken hearts, Miss Kay, the Lord is building Jerusalem, Miss Janine, the Lord is building Jerusalem. He's gathering together the outcasts of Israel, healing broken hearts, binding up their wounds. The Lord is building, the Lord is building up Jerusalem. Yes, that's what he's doing right before our eyes, you all. Every day, planes flying in, putting their wheels down on Tel Aviv and other places, bringing the outcasts home, home. Do you understand that? I mean, that is shouting news, y'all. I mean, they, they've basically been gone over 2,000 years, and you and I are the generation to enjoy seeing them till the soil and grow the greatest flowers and crops in the world. Oh, hallelujah. Yes, the enemy is bearing down on them, but God's hand is on them forever. Never again as a whole nation will they leave the land he has given them. Oh, very exciting. I'm excited today on this December 28th. My goodness, we're coming down to the wire here to close up 2019, aren't we? And we will be reading from Zechariah chapter 12. Please, if you would open that up. And I hope that all of you, all of you, have your Bibles. And if not, next year, which is a couple days away, we will be reading once again the New King James Version of the One Year Bible. And you may pick that up very cheaply on Amazon or in a Christian bookstore. They will order it for you. Please get it, and then you will be following along. And you can then underline or make little stars or turn a page corner down, whatever, so that you have it to go back to. You don't have to say, mm, what day was that that we read such and such? And then you don't do it because you can't find it. I mean, let's, let's grow. Let's set the bar higher for this coming year, okay? Let's set the bar higher. I mean, Miss Janine, you said one time your Bible was in a cupboard. If it's still in the cupboard, get it out just for me. Just for me, sister. 
Get it out. <laughs> you will love it. Okay, are you there? Do you have Zechariah 12? And if not, for any reason, open up your ears, big and wide, to hear. Because faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. The burden of the Word of the Lord against Israel. And can you imagine, can you imagine that we as people do all kinds of things to give him a burden? Our precious God who gives us everything, including his son Jesus, we dare not do that anymore. We need to wash these robes white and get ready for his second coming. But we will read it, the burden of the word of the Lord against Israel. Good morning, Mel and Yolinda. Thus says the Lord, who stretches out the heavens, lays the foundation of the earth, and forms the spirit of man within him. Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of drunkenness to all the surrounding peoples when they lay siege against Judah and Jerusalem. And it shall happen in that day that I will make Jerusalem a very heavy stone for all peoples. All who would heave it away will surely be cut in pieces. Though all nations of the earth are gathered against it. In that day, says the Lord, I will strike every horse with confusion and its rider with madness. That's a terrible condition, y'all. I will open my eyes on the house of Judah and will strike every horse. Oh, I hate to know that. I hate to know that. Janine says she's going to get the wand. Good. Go get it, Janine. Good decision. I will open my eyes on the house of Judah and will strike every horse of the peoples with blindness. A blind horse. And the governors of Judah shall say in their heart, the inhabitants of Jerusalem are my strength in the Lord of hosts, their God. In that day, I will make the governors of Judah like a fire pan in a wood pile and like a fiery torch in the sheaths. They shall devour all the surrounding peoples on the right hand and on the left. But Jerusalem shall be inhabited again in her own place. Jerusalem. Hallelujah. Miss Sarah is here. Miss Sarah and I are having coffee. I should have my cup today. Jesus and coffee. That's what's important. <laughs> so I will see you, Miss Sarah, at 8.30. Okay, back to Zechariah 12. And we are on verse 7. Zechariah 12, 7. For those of you who just came, Miss Holly, wonderful to see your name. I need to stop in and see you, sister. The Lord will save the tents of Judah first. Got that? Going to save Judah first so that the glory of the house of David and the glory of the inhabitants of Jerusalem shall not become greater than that of Judah. In that day, the Lord will defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem the one who is feeble among them in that day shall be like David and the house of David shall be like God. Woo! Like the angel of the Lord before them. It shall be in that day that I will seek to destroy all the nations that come against Jerusalem. And I will pour on the house of David, David, and on the inhabitants of Jerusalem, the spirit of grace and supplication. Oh, wow. That's good news. The spirit of grace and supplication. Then they will look on me, whom they pierced. 
<clears throat> yes, they will mourn for him as one mourns for his only son and grieve for him as one grieves for a firstborn. In that day, there shall be a great mourning in Jerusalem, like the mourning at Hadad Rimmon in the plain of Megiddo. And the land shall mourn every family by itself, the family of the house of David by itself, and their wives by themselves, the family of the house of Nathan by itself. <clears throat> and their wives by themselves, the family of the house of Levi, Levi by itself, and their wives by themselves, the family of Shimei by itself, and their wives by themselves, all the families that remain, <clears throat> every family by itself, and their wives by themselves. And I, oh, I'd like more light on that, Holy Spirit. Why is that? That they will do that by themselves. I'd, I'd ask you to speak to our hearts and reveal. All right, we move along to chapter 13 of Zechariah. In that day, <clears throat> a fountain shall be opened for the house of David and for the inhabitants of Jerusalem for sin and for un cleanness. It shall be in that day, says the Lord of hosts, that I will cut off the names of the idols from the land. Hallelujah. And they shall no longer be remembered. <clears throat> I will also cause the prophets and the unclean spirit to depart from the land. So there you have, that, that's a good teaching, y'all. Don't, don't miss that. That's what can come in and inhabit the place, even your house or the city or the nation, unclean spirits. And he says he will cause the prophets and the unclean spirit to depart from the land. It shall come to pass that if anyone still prophesies, then his father and mother who begot him will say to him, you shall not live because you have spoken lies in the name of the Lord, and his father and mother who begot him shall thrust him through when he prophesies. And it shall be in that day that every prophet will be ashamed of his vision when he prophesies. They will not wear a robe of coarse hair to deceive, but he will say, I am no prophet, I am a farmer. For a man taught me to keep cattle from my youth. And one will say to him, What are these wounds between your arms? And then he will answer, Those with which I was wounded in the house of my friends. Ooh, a lot of explanation needs to happen about all that. <clears throat> Awake, O sword, against my shepherd, Against the man who is my companion, says the Lord of hosts, strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. Then I will turn my hand against the little ones and it shall come to pass in all the land, says the Lord, that two thirds in it shall be cut off and die. Hard stuff. But one third shall be left in it. I will bring the one-third through the fire, will refine them as silver is refined, and test them <clears throat> as gold is tested. They will call on my name, and I will answer them. I will say, this is my people, and each one will say, the Lord is my God. Oh, hallelujah. That one-third is hanging in there with the Lord. How nice. How nice. All right, we move right along to Revelation chapter 19. Revelation 19, way in the back, y'all. 
After these things, John says, <clears throat> I heard a loud voice of a great multitude in heaven saying, Hallelujah, salvation and glory and honor and power belong to the Lord our God, for true and righteous are his judgments, because he has judged the great harlot who corrupted the earth with her fornication, and he has avenged on her the blood of his servants shed by her. Wow. And again they said, <clears throat> Alleluia! Her smoke rises up forever and ever. And the 24 elders and the four living creatures fell down and worshipped God who sat on the throne saying, Amen! Alleluia! Then a voice came from the throne saying, Praise our God, all you his servants and those who fear him, both small and great. And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude as the sound of many waters and as the sound of many thunderings saying, Alleluia! For the Lord God omnipotent reigns. Woo! We could break into song, y'all. For let us be glad and rejoice and give him glory. For the marriage of the Lamb has come and his wife has made herself ready. Oh, let's get ready, y'all. Let's determine in this next year to raise the bar on our Christian life, to be determined to get the spots and wrinkles out of our lives and get ready for the marriage of the Lamb. And to her it was granted to be arrayed in fine linen, clean and bright. For the fine linen, I get what this is, the fine linen is the righteous acts of the saints. That's what it is, okay? So let's get after it. Righteous acts. Then he said to me, Write, Blessed are those who are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said to me, These are the true sayings of God. And I fell at his feet to worship him. But he said to me, see that you do not do that. I am your fellow servant and of your brethren who have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God. Worship God. For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Got that? The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Oh, y'all, isn't this glorious? This is a glorious word here for you and I. Listen, if you plan to be in heaven, you need to get a hunger and a thirst for his word so you know what it's all about. Hallelujah. Now I saw heaven opened and behold, a white horse. Oh, a white horse, Miss Sarah. And he who sat on him was called faithful and true. So we know who this is. And in righteousness he judges and makes war. His eyes were like a flame of fire. And on his head were many crowns. He had a name written that no one knew except himself. He was clothed with a robe dipped in blood. Oh, we know who this is. And his name is called 
the word of God. <clears throat> the word of God. He is in your hands. He is in your hands. If you don't have him in your hands, I beg you, go get a copy and get it in your hands. Read many versions. Ah, we all need to inspire. We all need to inspire and be inspired by our friend Scott, <clears throat> who's in Israel right now, I might add. <clears throat> Excuse me. Who is deep into the Hebrew? We ought to be too. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the armies in heaven, clothed in fine linen, white and clean, followed him on white horses. Oh my goodness, that's a whole army. A countless army of white horses. <clears throat> now out of his mouth goes a sharp sword, that with it he should strike the nations, and he himself will rule them with a rod of iron. He himself treads the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And I got news for all of you. That throne room is not peaceful and quiet. It is loud. It is loud with bowings and praisings. Oh, hallelujah. And he has on his robe and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, then I saw an angel standing in the sun and he cried with a loud voice. He wasn't quiet. He cried with a loud voice, saying to all the birds that fly in the midst of heaven, Come and gather together for the supper of the great God, that you may eat the flesh of kings, the flesh of captains, the flesh of mighty men, the flesh of horses, and of those who sit on them, and the flesh of all people free and slave, both small and great. Oh my goodness, calling all the birds to come eat the flesh. And I saw the beast, the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him who sat on the horse and against his army. It's not quiet, war is going to happen. Then the beast was captured, and with him the false prophet. Oh, hallelujah. Boy, I'm looking forward to that day, aren't you? The beast was captured, and with him the false prophet, who worked signs in his presence, by which he deceived those who received the mark of the beast, and those who worshipped his image. These two were cast alive into the lake of fire, burning with brimstone. Not a pleasant sight. Cast alive. Their time had come. Oh, my sweet little Jesus did that. You betcha. You betcha. That's what this word says. And the rest were killed with the sword which proceeded from the mouth of him who sat on the horse. Can you imagine that? The sword is coming out of his mouth. And all the birds were filled with their flesh. Oh, not a pretty sight, y'all. Not a pretty sight. But it's coming. Get ready. Maybe we'll be here, maybe we won't. Everybody thinks they know when the time of the rapture is. Huh. Only Father God really knows. So we just need to be ready, right? Ready. All right. Let's move right along to Psalm 147. 
Praise the Lord, for it is good to sing praises to our God, for it is pleasant and praise is beautiful. And here we have what I opened up with singing. The Lord builds up Jerusalem. He gathers together the outcasts of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He counts the number of the stars. He calls them all by name, every star. Sometimes I look up and I say, I wonder what your name is. All the stars are named. Countless. Only he knows. The Lord is building Jerusalem. The Lord is building Jerusalem. Gathering together the outcasts of Israel. Healing broken hearts. Binding up their wounds. The Lord is building. The Lord is Building up Jerusalem. Oh, it just makes my heart glad. Mm -mm -mm. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. His understanding is infinite. The Lord lifts up the humble. He casts wicked down to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Sing praises on the harp to our God, who covers the heavens with clouds, who prepares rain for the earth, who makes grass to grow on the mountains. He gives to the beasts its food. God's doing all this, all at the same time. Isn't it marvelous? And to the young ravens that cry, he does not delight in the strength of the horse. He takes no pleasure in the legs of a man. The Lord takes pleasure in those who fear him. Fear him. When we have godly fear, we will do what we ought to be doing. We need more godly fear. The Lord takes pleasure in those who fear him, in those who hope in his mercy. <clears throat> Praise the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion, for he has strengthened the bars of your gates. He has blessed your children within you. He makes peace in your borders and fills you with the finest wheat. He sends out his command to the earth. His word runs very swiftly. Oh, Lord, take this word that we are announcing today with our voices and run with it, Holy Spirit. Run with it. Run through our hearts first, and then let us be so overjoyed, so filled with zeal that we pass it on, that we push air and get it out there. Get it out there. Let us defeat Satan. Hallelujah. His run, his word runs very swiftly. He gives snow like wool. He scatters the frost like ashes. He casts out his hail like morsels. Who can stand before his cold? Ah, oh, in Northern California, they found people dead in their cars, cabs, couldn't get through the snow. He sends out his word and melts them. He causes his wind to blow and the waters flow. Oh, hallelujah. I tell you what, I have some pictures. There was great rain and all of rushing waters under the bridges in Pocot land. And I have a brother on here who knows what I'm talking about. And I mean, I, I forget what John said, 158 or something. People were killed during that time. Swept Many swept away in the waters. He causes his wind to blow and the waters flow. He declares his word to Jacob, his statutes and his judgments to Israel. He has not dealt thus with any nation. And as for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise the Lord. 
<clears throat> wow, what a psalm. All right, we are now in Proverbs 31. We're going to finish it up. Proverbs 31, verses 1 through 7. 31, 1 through 7. The words of King Lemuel, the utterance which his mother taught him. There you go. That was a righteous mother taught his son. And now he's a king. I mean, all of we righteous mothers, let's make sure that we are busy teaching the children and the grandchildren. What, my son, and what, son of my womb, and what, son of my vows, do not give your strength to women, nor your ways to that which destroys kings. There's a wise mother. It is not for kings, O Lemuel. It is not for kings to drink wine, nor for princes intoxicating drink. Oh, if there's anything I hate, it's alcohol. Lest they drink and forget the law. That's the reason she's giving. Lest they drink and forget the law and pervert the justice of all the afflicted. Give strong drink to him who is perishing and wine to those who are bitter of heart. Let him drink and forget his poverty and remember his misery no more. But you can't tell me that lady is happy that someone is perishing. She's hoping that they're going to take this advice of hers when they're young. Oh, hallelujah. Don't, I, I got I to gotta quit. I got to quit on that one. All right. What a powerful word. Thank you, Jesus. Woo, thank you, Father God. You have certainly taught us this morning. You have laid it right out there. And you have encouraged us all at the same time. Father God, we thank you so much. We bow our hearts and spirits and worship you. We worship you, Lord. We worship you in your throne. There you are, Lord. Elders are bowing, angels are flying. Oh, hallelujah, Lord. We worship you. We worship you, Jesus. We have read exciting things about you, Lord Jesus, today. How you will come on a white horse with King of kings and Lord of lords right on your thigh. A sword coming out of your mouth to do in the last of your enemies. Cast them live into burning hell. Oh, Father God, let godly fear come over us as we read that. Let us just get it together on a daily basis. Get rid of complacency in our lives, Lord and cause us to get very, very serious about your word for the coming new year. Very serious. That's what we are living for. That's what we are breathing for. Never, never has America needed a strong army of praying Christians than's gonna be needed in this coming year. And I'm asking you to get into the army. I'm asking myself, get stronger, Jane. Get bolder. Get healed of everything that would trouble you. Get it. Reach out for it. It's already purchased. We just need to reach out for it. Sometimes we're, we're waiting for God to just put it on us. No, go after it. Go after it. Begin to declare it. It's yours. It's your precious treasure.
given to you by the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's go after people who are fooling around with the gospel, in and out, in and out, in and out, or not at all. They don't know you yet. Oh, let's get a burden for their salvation. Let's be burdened to invite them to go out to lunch or whatever. Think of an idea to connect with those who you love and who you have a burden for to come to Christ and gently present the gospel. Don't look at their faces. Their faces might go, oh no, that's why they... Don't look. Just sweetly tell them. Let them know. Let them know. Praise you, Jesus. Yes, Connie says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That's a word for all of us. So we declare that today, that we are strengthened to follow you, Lord. We can do all things. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Father God, we hold up Israel to you. We hold up Jerusalem. We'd ask, Lord, that you would bring peace to that city, to the country. We'd ask, Lord, that every evil rocket fired would be caught in midair and destroyed. We'd ask, Lord, that their kindness, how they in their hospitals, they treat all the Arabs, all the Palestinians. They bring healing to them, too. Father God, let many, many enemies have their eyes opened up this coming year and cease doing wicked works and begin to love your people, to have a fear of you. Oh, hallelujah to the Lamb. Father God, we hold up America. And I'd ask, Lord, that your right hand would keep turning over and revealing all of the wicked plots and plans. It's like the biggest messy spider web we ever saw. Terrible. And Lord, our desire is that the blood of Jesus flow all over America. Jesus is Lord over America from coast to coast, border to border. <clears throat> Let great revival happen, Lord. Let great revival happen in Mexico and Canada, our borders. Lord, Canada is going down, dealing with things that shouldn't be. And Father God, we hold up our dear neighbor, Canada, and we say, let revival fires hit from Trudeau on down to the least of those. In Jesus' mighty name, oh, Father God, we thank you for the, the uh, overwhelming election, the choosing in the primaries of Bibi Netanyahu. And Father, we'd ask that your will and way would be perfect happening with this man and with his sweet wife, Sarah, and family. Use them yet, Lord, in great and mighty ways for Israel. Use Donald Trump and Melania and Barron and their family and all of the righteous in our government to do great works this coming year, great exploits. We'd ask that evil be bound in the name of Jesus Christ. Lying, deceiving, be bound these spirits over Washington, D.C., these spirits of murder, these spirits of greed and corruption in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, let all those that are busy investigating, let this now be the coming time when they have authority from you to, to bring it forth totally the truth and to actively do something, actively do something. Lord, we know you have a timing and we're asking precious God that all of that happen and that the bottom line be that your word has more peaceful time to go out to every last person who has not heard. Every last person. Lord, bring peace 
to Nigeria. Anoint your people. Anoint your people. So hard to see these lines of people that are that have, are having their heads chopped off. Believers. For them, great reward in heaven. But Lord, we're asking that their witness inspire those of us who are alive to be busy about our Father's business. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Go ahead with your prayers and your songs and your praises. I love you so. Bye-bye.